Boy there, it's Skyward Shield. Welcome to my new series, a revamp of my old uh, series. Welcome to So You Wanna Build. So you wanna build a God and Smite for a certain scenario. That's what I'm here for. I'm gonna try as many different scenarios as I can. I'm gonna go about one video about these tutorials for you for per week. Um, the, our first episode is gonna star star Chunga in the solo lane, so we today I'm gonna teach you how to build Chunga in the solo lane and it's a bit of a different build compared to your standard mid lane build, which obviously mid lane and solo lane have different responsibilities. Uh, mid lane is all about bur having the uh, build up to your burst because you are the you usually in most common scenarios you're the you're the high hitting damage dealer from, that's magical compared to like the ADC which does constant uh, damage like over time with their basic attacks most of the time. But anyway, let's get right into it. Starter, you want Sands of the Time, okay. and then you want... Uh, in a normal situation, I will go over some possible different situations if you ha don't run into the common type of build of enemy comp. Um, get Imperial Helmet. This is, for this is gonna add up to 1400 gold, so you only have enough room for two pots. You can get two mana pots if you really want to just uh, uh, rely on your healing instead. Although I say typically get a healing pot and a mana pot, you absolutely need to have a mana pot, no exception. If you want, if you want, if you really are dependent on your mana, you could you could switch out healing pot for the multi pot. It's up to you. I, I think it's down to preference and depending on what the enemy is dealing. If you think you can get, uh, if you're not going to take that much damage for the early portions of the game, you could just stick it out and get a multi pot to keep your mana going because remember in today's meta you don't simply start out with the blue buff like you used to so you ha you should definitely bring a mana pot to keep you until your jungler is able to help you take out the uh, the blue buff anyway obviously the starter item I'm gonna start on the, the first relic you get is the teleport glyph so you could return your chunga you're not that fast especially in this with this build you don't have any shoes so have fun with that and as you can see, the half the reason why I say you definitely need mana is because you're going to be burning through your mana like a madman. That's 60 right there, but look, in the beginning, you every four seconds you could use it. So over time, you're going to be burning through your mana. So that's why I suggest you hurry, clear lane, and hope your jungler. Make sure you're well coordinated with your jungler as well, and just try and, and get the blue buff ASAP so you can not rely on mana pots as much. If you want, you can send the rabbit to go get you another one. I would say get Chalice of the Oracle, but the problem with that is you probably won't have enough money to get, because um, considering you want this for defense, just a little bit of physical protections so you can not die. So you can uh, take a little bit of hit, uh, take a little bit of punishment for the early portions. Obviously, you level up your three after you get your one. In fact, here's a good trick: if you want, the three's uh, range is a lot better than you think it is. You can heal your your minions as well as damage both the front and the back line of the wave. Your third uh, level should be put towards your uh, your two. I won't go over skills too much in this series unless it's a complete beginner's guide. But, sands, but the point of why I say you get Sands of Time is because it's perfect for Chunga. It's perfect for any cooldown based god. In fact, here's another way to clear lane if you want to try that. That's the ideal way I would do it because you, you, clear, you hit everything or, as, or mostly everything and all that. And Sands of Time helps you. If you're in a pinch and you're running low on mana, you get, you get enough a little bit faster the lower it goes. Obviously, once you get up to your... once you have a lot of mana, it won't recharge as fast, it's just the, the default MP5 that you're going to get, but you know what, it's fine, you'll be fine. Anyway, put a point into your three, um, let's, let's go into the next item. After that, you get Lotus, you get shoot, Shoes of Focus. Now, some might say, why didn't you get Lotus Crown maxed out, because, spoiler alert, that's the next item. Okay, now, if you are being bullied, if you really are getting bullied, by all means, go ahead and rush Lotus Crown. If you feel you need to do that, you're just going to be very slow for a while. You get the shoes so you can get extra mana, you get extra cooldown, and that's going to be your cooldown for a good portion of the match. Anyway, when you're level 6, actually put a point into your 3 so your heals can be a little more effective. Because, yes, you need your 1 to be powerful, but for now, you want to focus as well as... You can keep your minions alive a little bit longer with this. 
Anyway, after that, obviously max out uh, and get Lotus Crown. Lotus Crown, very effective. Like, very effective, and you get your heals early. Now, I'm gonna get Book of Thoth out of the way, because I need to kind of stack for this. I'm gonna show you the max power in a bit. I will time... I will have to pause and show you the power at the end, and you get Book of Thoth. But let me talk Lotus Crown first. Lotus Crown, you get the... Because Rod of Asclepius, by the time this video comes out, will be nerfed. Now... I would say you can get it on Chunga in the solo lane regardless, but get but high res's intent of nerfing uh, Rod of Asclepius is the is to make people use other healing uh, specific items like Lotus Crown or or its parallel, which I will talk about its parallel Celestial Legion Helm later. You know, they want people to use those items more frequently. Lotus Crown is still really good. I actually do want to make a video on on that not all gods can benefit from both Rod of Asclepius and Lotus Crown. That some gods can only are better with one, some are better with the other, and some are better with both. Actually, some could benefit with both. But you get you get the team fight item because that's why you get Lotus Crown for the sake of heals and the team fight. When the team fight phase happens, like 20 minutes in the match, you are going to want um, you're going to want this instead of normally in the mid. If you're in the mid lane, you may not rush Lotus Crown. In fact, you might have a build like this, but you would have gotten Book of the Author Warlock Sash for, uh, instead before you got your shoes. Then stack that, get your shoes. You might get your pen. You pro might get Rod of Asclepius afterwards. But by the time you get Lotus Crown. It will have been so late in the match. You're not. It may not even be complete unless you're ahead. But if you get it now, you get it. You make it first or second that you complete, and you will have that on on standby. And to top that off, because of the protections, you can heal yourself when you're being chased down by enemies, and you might actually live through, through a fight. You might live through a fight, and you might help allies live through a fight because of those protections. Again, I will talk about Celestial Legion Helm, but for later. Basically, because you're getting Book of Thoth, you're just you're you're kind of saying, I may or may not get Rada Tehuti. Now, Rada Tehuti, you can say is better than um, is better than Book of Thoth. I can understand that, but it, with this, this since we're a soul laner and not a mid laner, you are not being depended on more so for your damage. Well, depending on who you are, but typically. You're not just there for your damage, you're there to be a nuisance to the enemy team, you're there for the CC, you're there to, to be a second, a secondary tank in most, uh, most cases. But um, anyway, now here's where things get a little controversial. Because I got Lotus Crown, I have physical protections, but what about magical? Wait, well, actually they moved it here, so let me f correct that. I say get Void Stone. Now, technically, this means you have no uh, pen. Technically, it means you have nothing. All you have is an aura. Now, most most guardians won't get Void Stone, despite it being an aura. It's an aura that affi afflicts other enemies, and it's good. It's pretty. It's good to have because you know you're ch you're a healer, and as everyone knows, healers love to get focused on by the enemy team. So. On one hand, this may seem crazy, but on another, guess what? Because people are trying to kill you, they're going to have their, their, their protections reduced. Which means if your allies are there, they're going to have an easier time taking them out, as well as protecting you. Mind you, this is assuming this is a, well, a, a good enough coordinated team. Now, with this, you're going to get magical protections, so you can take some damage from another mage, or a guardian, depending on how they are, like if they're aggressive or not, like a Bacchus, or... Um, and Ares, you can tank their hits a little bit. Anyway, so with that in mind, the next item. The next item is going to be Kronos Pendant. You want the cooldown, and guess what? For for the moment, until you sell your starter, you have max. Uh, you have max cooldown. How does that make you feel? Look at that. Five seconds for that. Two, three seconds for that. For your one, and your ult. Gonna take 50, 55 seconds. Of course. Because of Chronos Pendant's passive, every 10 seconds, one a second comes off everything on cooldown. You uh, you're gonna be get be able to use your abilities, especially your one and your three, and eventually your two, very efficiently. Anyway, so once you're done with that, your sixth item, your sixth item is whatever you think you need. Do you think you can get more power, and you want to just one? You can if you get Rod of Dehudi on Chunga. 
Okay, we are at 323 power. I should probably show... I should probably show off, basically, what you're going to be wearing. I'm going to go with a speed buff, because that's not going to affect my physical stats, I, be I believe. So, let's just clear the wave. I want to get these stacks maxed, so actually, I will see you guys in a moment. I'm going to complete these stacks. Okay, I'm back. Got the stacks completed. Um, okay, assuming when you had Sands of Time still, you are about you are at about 349. Well, to be fair, I am not level 20. Let's get those levels going up real quick. Also, one benefit of getting your dance, if you want, you can actually sneak a point onto your dance or two a little bit earlier. If you think you can, if you think you need that, because if you put more points into your cooldown, or into your into your two, your cooldown goes down. So it started at 12, now it's at 7.2. But that's because we had max cooldown right now. Once you sell it, we're about 358 power. Okay, that's pretty nice. But now, if you choose to hootie, you're going all the way up to 579. That is really good power for a solo laner. You are just as much of a damage dealer as your mid laner is. So hypothetically, if, if somebody like the jungler tries to box you, and you know they've used stuff like their jump to catch up to you, you can just take them out. <laughs> the damage on there, mind you, that was just a raw bot, but typically they're, you're going to be able to wipe them out. Especially if you can target multiple people and hit them with your ult. That's a longer stun, that means more time for you to take them out. Because all you need to do is ult, use your 1, and then use your 3, and then maybe a basic attack or 2, and they're dead. You have a lot of power to, to roll with with this one. Another, all their alternatives. If if this is a bulky team, like they are pretty tanky. Like say they have like a Bracken jungle, and they've got already a bulky uh, wall, like a Sylvanas. Or they could, or like like if or if you feel like everybody is building some protections, like even the junglers. Some junglers like to build some defensive items, like a Thor. Like Thor can be Bruiser. He'll build like a Breastplate of Valor and a Bulwark of Hope. If you feel you need more protect, uh, more shred, you can get Obsidian Shard. Your power won't be as high, but you know you're still going to be getting through people's defenses. In fact, another item that could be good, Spear of the Magus, because you have such low cooldown, you're going to be breaking down their protections. In fact, just using, just using your one and then your three, or you could just open up with your three and then your one, since your one does more power. You will, t you can reduce their magical protections by ten, and then just your one will do a little bit more. The last item I could recommend from from that's power related um, is Spear of Desolation. It got a it got cheaper. It's 2,600 gold now. If you receive an, a kill or assist on an enemy god, all your cooldowns are reduced by one second. Now I will say this may be a bit redundant. In fact, the one thing I'll say is if you get this, I would probably sell your shoes of the foc uh, shoes of focus for um, like for sh excuse me shoes of the magi. Because you get a little bit of flat pen from that, and really, you're not getting, you're only getting 20 flat pen with this. So you kind of want more there, if you if you want, because you already have max cooldown again. It's like you just upgraded Sands of Time, basically. However, if you feel you need your heals to be more effective, I can recommend Rod of Asclepius, because you know okay. it's not that much power. You get you get extra HP, which is always nice, but you move a little faster. You got you've got. Chunga, since she doesn't have like a jump or anything, most healers don't have really any escapes save for like Terra. Th that's a lot of them pick up as Rod of Asclepius because the movement speed allows them to retreat faster or get, uh, help uh, allies faster. Movement speed is nice in moderation. If you just get a little bit extra movement speed, you're great. As you know, the more movement speed you try to get, if if you try to go like theoretically, I actually wanted to do like a, as a dare. Um, an all movement speed Mercury, but that's a bad idea. You're actually going to move slower in the long run. But a little bit of movement speed that's subtle, like Rod of Asclepius, can be great. That's why it's a, it's good to have, like, in fact, Chunga, in that, since, uh, spoiler to that video, Chunga is one of the few gods, I say, that can benefit from both Lotus Crown and Rod of Asclepius. I'll get into that in another video, for a video that's, that's something I've been wanting to do for months now. But basically, yeah, this is ba the, the ideal build. The perfect build, if you want to just go to town, oh, get to Hootie. Wow. Now anyway, let's talk alternative scenarios. So for that, I will sell everything but Book of Thoth, because I do not want to get those stacks again. That is not fun. Okay, so you get your starter item, Sands of Time. If they're another mage, just get shoes. In fact, with this, you should be able to have enough to buy a Chalice of uh, Leia. 
you can you have enough money to buy a chalice of mana. Now, the problem with that is it feels like you're still going to want to get mana pots, which is unfortunate cuz if you're good, if you're good, you don't ha you may not ever really back to base as Chunga. As you know, with that build in particular, I should mention, that build, especially once you get to Hootie, gives you so much MP5 that you don't know what to do with. You can theoretically never go back to base ever again. The only time you're going back is if you die. And that's fine. You'll be fine. Like, that's the point of this solo lane Chunga build. You can sustain so well, you might even outlast the mages in the mid lane. You've got the power, thanks to Book of Thoth, and you have enough uh, uh, items to help support your allies through, for various situations. But anyway, so with that in mind, get your Shoes of Focus. If they're a mage, you can get Bulwark of Hope or Voidstone if you think you... If you want Voidstone for that early uh, sh uh, 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 protection reduction, go ahead. Get that instead. Okay, game. Anyway, you can get that... If if that if you're not wanting to do that right away and you want to sustain yourself, you can get Bulwark of Hope. Now I will say, if you're going to get Bulwark of Hope, that probably means you're going to get Obsidian Shard. So let's go with the build. Bulwark of Hope, get that out of the way. Or if they're a healer like Chunga, because you never know, get Pestilence instead. Chances if they can heal, even if they're like a Herc, if it's a, if there is a Herc on the on their side that's fighting you, consider building Pestilence. You may not build it there because you want Lotus Crown instead because it has it has physical protections. And he's a physical attacker, so, you know, do that. If, like, a Herc or a Guan Yu, consider getting Pestilence after Book of Thoth, because you'll have power, and you want the anti-heal. But anyway, so let's get your, you get your Bulwark of Hope, then you get your stacks out of Book of Thoth. Now, from there, you can make a choice. I say right after that, go for some pen, oh, wow. then magical. get your Kronos Pendant. Sell your, sell your Sands of Time, and whatever you think you need right there. Like Raja Hoodie. Bam. There you go. Still has a lot of power, and you also have a lot of health. Um, should, I think that's. I think this is a good build. Now, anyway, another alternative, just to clear it up, if you want to get defenses all bunched up in one item, and you don't want to make room for it, I can recommend Hide of the Urchin, although you're going to probably want to build this before you even get Book of Thoth, or right after, because here's the thing. You want to get this before you get into the into the team fighting uh, section of the game of the match, because if to me the height of the urchin is an item that's now forgotten. In season three, it was a it was a nice item, and then after they they made it cheaper and easier to get, I thought at the beginning of season four, everyone's gonna want to pick up this item, but no, they don't. Everyone picks up or the supports, I should say, the supports always build, um, as you know. Gauntlet of Thieves, which was different in Season 3. Good for the selfish healers. Now it's good for everybody. As with So that's what the support's going to get. Now you won't need that. I can argue make a case for Shield of Regrowth, but honestly I don't want that because it doesn't have any protections. That's why I don't recommend it on Chunga. Unless it's like Duel or something, which, anyway. Um, you get Hide of the Urchin, and because you're, you got it early, you're going to have plenty of opportunities to get it stacked. Because, as you know, you get three magical and physical protections for each god kill or assist, up to ten. So, if you get this thing maxed out, you have 70 physical and 70 magical protections. To put that in perspective, Lotus Crown only offers 60 physical protections, and Voidstone only offers um, only offers 70. To so, it actually matches Voidstone's protections, and it surpasses, um, it surpasses uh, Lotus Crown's by a bit. And it gives you extra HP and extra mana. Pretty good. It's a pretty good deal. But anyway, that's basically what I. That's basically everything for this video. Um, any other uh, other tips and tricks I can recommend is again be well coordinated. You're probably going to want your jungler to help you in the early portions if you can, because if they because they're going to try and gang up on you. And if Chunga is behind in the match, she I wouldn't say she's irrelevant. There are other gods that have that are worse when behind. But if she gets behind, it is really hard for her to climb back up. In fact, I've had some videos where I start out bad, but I come back because allies kind of help me ease, ease me back into it. So don't worry. If you're behind, you're not completely out of it. But just you really do need other people to ask to, like, to help you out. Because if they don't help you, you're useless. Even if you get your heal, your healing items, you're kind of useless in terms of getting enemy kills, helping with assists. Minus your, minus your ult. Your ult will keep you relevant. Unlike someone who, like, 
like an Odin who's behind, because even though an Odin is behind, he's still dangerous because he has the cage. You have your ult. That's your saving grace. You need to keep that in mind and fire it when you feel you can you can help secure kills or take or take enemies out. Because by this point in time, your ult's going to do so much damage. As you see right now, it's 460 damage plus 403. So on someone with little protections like this raw bot, let's take a look. 719, 488, 373, two basics later, goodbye. That's the end of that. So to see, as you can see, with Chunga, she can wipe out enemies with this build. Keep in mind, you ha you have to worry about certain things. But yeah, uh, I mean, this was an alternative build. But yeah. Anyway, that'll do it for this video. If you have any comments about or questions about Chunga and this build, feel free to put in the comment section below. I am no Chunga expert. I am rank 10, but you know, sh I don't see her in the SPL. She's not that good, I guess. At least, maybe not yet. Soon they'll realize, oh, I completely went over this, but yeah, your second relic. I, I'm, I'm embarrassed that I kind of didn't mention it, but your choices are obvious. You can get Aegis to keep yourself alive. You can get Meditation. Typically, your, soul, your uh, support is going to get that. If you want a Meditation to give emergency healing because your 3 is on cooldown or it's just not enough, go ahead. Also, upgrade your teleport when you can. I know you're gonna build stacks, but build this, get this thing when you can. Because since you're Chunga and you're gonna be very slow, it is imperative you could be able to teleport earlier. If you can get that edge, that return to your lane, or help prevent them from taking another lane's tower via teleport, it can be great. Your second relic can be Aegis, Meditation, Sprint, if you wanna be able to move, help your allies move faster. I would say get beads, however your 2 is basically a pocket Aegis and a pocket Sanctuary or, or beads all at once. But honestly you're using the dance more for the, the, the CC effect. The damage is nice too, but you're using that to more, more so to dodge CC, so I'd rather take this personally. Um, Thorns is a bit of a tricky one. If you have Hide of the Urchin you can do it. Since you're a, a healer, people are going to target you, so on paper it sounds good. I'm just a little eh, I think it's good on, on supports like Fafnir, someone that that just attracts attention and attracts attacks so have fun with that and then if you want you could get bracer of undoing just undo all the damage you took in the past three to five seconds so if they're trying to take you out and you use this bam all your health's back and they gotta do it all over again i don't know how this will work on an adc though but anyway yes okay that'll do it for this video feel free to share any comments and for my next video i'm not sure so feel free to give suggestions my ideas. I'm probably going to go with gods I'm familiar with, so I haven't played every single god, haven't mastered every single god, so I'm sorry if I don't pick a god that you're not familiar with. You can tell who might come based on my recent videos, so feel free to get an idea there. Anyway, that'll do it for this video. I will see you guys in another one. Goodbye now.